watching AYV Television. Sierra Leone's rule of law credential, the persisting weak links. A piece written by Ibrahim Tomi in 2016 stated, while Sierra Leone is generally considered as one of the success stories of post-conflict countries that have, enormous, um, that have made enormous strides at building democratic institutions as well as attracting foreign direct investment, it needs to do a lot more to bolster its rule of law credentials. Democracy thrives on a number of pillars, but perhaps the strongest one is the rule of law. In a country where the rule of law is not effectively administered, injustice, incidents of violence, fraudulent elections, and economic crimes are more likely to occur with impunity. As Sierra Leone hinges away from its recent um, in glorious history through economic and infrastructure development, it cannot afford to ignore the imposing demands for strengthening national accountability mechanisms. Sierra Leone's rule of law credentials is clearly not the worst on the continent, but increased government investment as well as legal reforms to make democratic institutions function more independently of the executive arm of government, which is required to address some of the immediate challenges confronting them. In present Governance Day, Ibrahim Tomi has called on the government to reverse the decision of appointing members of the Peace Commission on the grounds that the decision violates the very act that establishes the commission. Some opposition political parties are describing the appointment of the Western Region Commissioner for the National Electoral Commission as unconstitutional. Parliament of Sierra Leone amidst critical challenges is restricting the use of the honorable title to only members of parliament, former members, and those the house confer the title upon. Tonight, we shall assess the country's democratic stance and the rule of law. My name is Samuel Wise Bangura, and this is AYV on Sunday. Good evening and a very warm welcome to AYV on Sunday on Channel 43 on TV, on Radio FM 101.7, online on www.ayvnews.com and on our Africa Young Voices Media Empire Facebook page. On my panel this evening, I have with me a political um, science lecturer, Lena Thompson. Good morning. Um, good evening and yeah. welcome to AYV on Sunday. I'm used to saying good morning on Wake Up Sierra Leone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have with me from um, the communications, um, from the Strategic Communications Unit at the Ministry of Information and Communication, Imran Sila. Good evening, Imran, and welcome to the show. Thank you for the opportunity. Good evening. All right. Um, well, these are the two guests with me in the studio right now. Um, the Acting National Publicity Secretary of the Opposition All People's Congress Party, um, Sidi Yaya Tunis, is on his way um, joining us, and hopefully we shall be joining... Um, Brister Ibrahim Tommy. But I'm going to start off um, the conversation. But just before then, to you watching and listening, remember you can always participate in our conversation. Um, drop your comments, drop your questions on the Africa Young Voices Media Empire Facebook page. We'll find time to go through all of them. And um, you can alternatively phone in when the call line is open later on. And the number for you to do so is plus 232 302 3062 um, Let me start off quickly, Imran. Um, I'm going to take you on the decision of um, some opposition political parties, the APC, the NGC, calling that uh, the appointment of the Western Region chairperson for NEC is unconstitutional because according to them, the constitution provides that that particular appointment should be made after consultation with the leaders of political parties, that was never done, according to the um, APC, for example. And um, in fact, the letter that was sent to them, the letter went to the APC, or the Secretariat of the APC, a week after the pronouncement of the appointment has been made by um, your government. So, and the letter even stated, according to them, that um, the, uh, we are informing you and so, like, you were consulting them as prescribed by the Constitution. So that is unconstitutional. 
and that undermines the rule of law. Well, I mean, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, I mean, over time in our democratic dispensation, I mean, I think it is fair to say we've had uh, so many interpretations of what consultation really means. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, I am aware, and uh, based on my discussion with uh, Secretary to the President, that letters were sent out to all political parties, every mm -hmm. political party. Now, it is surprising to note that uh, the APC is saying that they received theirs about a week later. So, mm. uh, the fact of the matter is, I have been in touch with other, uh, with members of other political parties who, who've acknowledged that uh, they did receive their own letters on time. Yeah, and uh, they are aware of the decision, they were aware of the decision and uh, have no qualms with uh, the credentials of Zainab Mossi. Uh, we, we have to understand that uh, in our democratic dispensation, we mm -hmm. don't have, it's not just one political party or two. Mm. Mm. Parliament alone has about three more. Yeah, C4C, APC, and NGC, uh, in addition to others who contested the 2018 elections, mm -hmm. who were not lucky to have any member, mm -hmm. I mean, in the House of Parliament. So uh, you, you, you put it into co context and look at it more broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of the political parties that we have uh, have come out to say that uh, we have issues? So, so without, without, so without I mean, writing off, I mean, the other political parties, yeah. I mean, you just mentioned parties represented in Parliament, yeah. and those parties that are represented in Parliament are the ones raising this concern that they were never consulted um, as stated by the Constitution, so which gives them a major stake. I mean, we think the, poli the, the, the governance structure of the country. We, 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 we have to also note the undertones, the mm. political undertones to it, yeah? Mm. I mean, these are political parties who, uh, by and large, would always uh, want to get some political mileage out of everything that, uh, I mean, a party in government does. Mm. So that should not be lost on this, in, in this discussion. But look, the fact of the matter is, His Excellency the President, retired Brigadier Julius Madabu, uh, did the needful. There was due diligence in the process, right? That is something I can confirm authoritatively. Mm -hmm. And other political parties have acknowledged that they did receive their letters, right, in good time, uh, contrary to what the APS in. Now, uh, APC, I think, as a political party, need to question uh, their secretariat. Yeah, because if a letter dated at a particular date, sent out to every single political party, but somehow they received theirs a week later, I mean, it shows fundamentally they have a problem with the stru structures. Uh, but but that, should, that is understandable because they have their own internal issues, mm -hmm. I mean, at this material point in time. So mm -hmm. uh, that is so, something they so would just want quickly, to talk about. So um, just quickly, before I move over to um, Madam Thompson, if we go back to when um, the commissioner himself was appointed, mm -hmm. there were concerns again. I mean, the opposition parties expressed fear. They expressed the expressed some grave concerns. Union. No, the the the, the um, Na national electoral returning officer, right. um, um, Kone, Mohamed Kone, yeah. when he was appointed, I mean, there were these concerns expressed by the opposition parties, the, and it has always been, I mean, a practice by um, opposition parties when, I mean, those who are charged with the responsibility of mm. championing, I mean, the elections of the country are appointed, there's always this suspicion. It's, it's as if the, the, the appointment breeds paranoia amongst the players. Mm. And so and they were also calling that, oh, you did, I mean, no proper consultation um, was done with the political parties to a point that they had to, um, they, they had to write a letter to the, to the president or the government requesting the CV of um, Mohamed Kone, yeah. which was later given, yeah. and we never had anything again. But, but, but those are the concerns. And the fear is that the appointments that are coming um, up now in those institutions are perhaps people that would better be described as political, I mean, political stooges of the system. But, but, but uh, look, first of all, I think uh, we, we, we have to accept that there's, there are several unions, mm -hmm. right? Uh, competent, qualified uh, for the positions uh, they've been appointed uh, to. And uh, in the case of uh, Kone, the mm -hmm. next chairman, uh, he did go through Parliament. Uh, interestingly enough, on that day I was actually in Parliament, and one of the issues that uh, Honorable Chairman Maju Chaikoko raised uh, was uh, that uh, he's not sure as to whether uh, Kone 
is a registered member of the SLPP. I, I mean, he, he, he went back as far as college days and said, I believe then that he was SLPP, but for now I cannot confirm. So you, 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 you understand quite clearly uh, where he was coming from and mm -hmm. what the concerns of the All People's Congress uh, uh, was at that material point in time. Mm -hmm. But here's the point, and, and, and that is what we continue to say every now and then. A appointing a net commissioner does not mean you're going to win an election. Mm? Mm. Uh, the All People's Congress lost an election in 2018. Right? They had the opportunity to have a net commissioner on Fali and lost that election. We are going into the next elections based on our merits, based on the work we have done so far, based on our manifesto commitment and how far uh, we, we have come to achieve those manifesto commitment and go around the country, sell His Excellency the President, Richard Brigadier Jules Madabio, again to the people of this country. And I am quite sure and certain mm, it has nothing to do with NEC. Every single vote, whether it be for SLPP, for APC, for NGC, for C4C, or any other political party, mm -hmm. will be counted fairly. And I have no doubt, just mm -hmm. one more point, Go ahead. I have no doubt that this president will emerge victorious based on his track record and nothing else. At what point did the government realize that um, Zainab um, Awamosiri is perhaps um, the fittest candidate for the position um, because, oh, Zainab is one of us. I mean, many, many people, many, many opposition parties have accused Zainab as one of those who is actually championing or supporting the SLPP back even when she was at PPRC. You have the ADP accusing her of actually, I mean, planting seeds of discord, tearing them apart, the ND, other political parties to suit the SLPP. Mm. So at what point did you realize that, I mean, she was actually going to make a better candidate because she's one of you? I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, uh, uh, the, the, the view you have expressed about mm. uh, Zainab, because I remember back then, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, we were in the opposition, uh, I mean, trying to, 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 to get ourselves together, and it, it wasn't pretty then. Now, let me just say this for the very first time here and publicly, mm -hmm. yeah, that I thought at the time that Zainab was APC oh. for some strange reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I really thought at the time that she was APC. Uh. So, I, I mean, again, it, it is always good that when public <laughs> officials, right, are serving in a particular capacity. So that begs that the question, at what stage did you realize now she's SLPP? Well, I always thought, but I had nothing to confirm. Right? But it shows again, <laughs> it shows again how, how silly we can be, right, with right. our mindset politically, mm -hmm. that you suspect and, 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 and begin to see, you know, see smoke where there's none. Right? I, I think Zainab should be happy right, that uh, various sectors of society see her differently. Because if for anything, it shows, right, mm -hmm. she has been diligent, professional, mm -hmm. and that is why we continue to have, I mean, so many interpretations about Zainab and whether she's a registered member in the first place of any political party. Mm -hmm. That is something we need to celebrate. Once you, 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 you don't face criticisms mm -hmm. in your public office, then it shows there's something to be worried about. All right. But that's not the case. Let, let me welcome the national publicity, the national publicity secretary of the opposition All People's Congress Party, um, Sidi Ayatunis. Good evening and welcome, Sidi. Good evening. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, Lena, you, you, you've listened to the submission of the government. Um, when it comes to, I mean, following due process, the rule of law, they've always, I mean, ensured that um, they followed um, those procedures, those processes, and the law. And... The, 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 the reference point, um, CD is here, they're complaining that um, the appointment of the Western Region Chairperson of NEC, for example, is unconstitutional because the Constitution states it should be, it should be done after consultation with the um, leaders of the political parties. And they, in fact, according to the APC, they received the letter after the pronouncement has been made already. So it was out already that Zainab has been appointed, and that was when they received the letter. It's time to be corrected. And already we had that same concern when the... The, returning, the national returning officer was appointed, Mohamed Kone. Where, where does this put um, democracy and the rule of law before we talk about perhaps the credentials of the person being appointed? Well, well if we have such um, um, occurrences um, actually happening, mm -hmm. it tends to undermine the whole process. Right. Because at the, the, the main point of a democratic state is that we have accountability and also uh, transparency. Right. 
And if in the constitution, which is above everything else, mm -hmm. says that we, sh um, we, um, we, we, we should have consultations among the, the, um, the, um, the different parties, I think it's the onus is on the government mm -hmm. to be very open about and transparent and consult. Um, you, could, you could try to make it semantic as saying, Consultation means um, 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 different um, yeah, um, uh, uh, things. But at the onset, in order for, for citizens to have trust in democracy, mm -hmm. in order for those uh, democratic processes to be fermented in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. we need to have systems in place that government the onus is on the government at mm -hmm. the end of the day th that th to ensure that we go through this process and citizens see that the post that there is a process it is open it is accessible and, and so forth but when you have this suspicion i know um opposition party will always have something to criticize but don't give them something to mm -hmm. criticize mm -hmm. you know because um, uh, um, uh, um, these positions are sensitive so we, we have to ensure that the government, mm -hmm. the onus is on the government to ensure that the, it, it, it goes through the various process that it goes to, to uphold the rule of law. We cannot have a government undermining um, 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 its own laws. Mm. You know? So if, 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 they have a, if the APC have a legitimate claim, I think it is something that we have to look at because it undermines Ever, it, it undermines the institution, mm -hmm. okay? It undermines corporate governance. It, and, and therefore, it undermines the fundamentals of democracy we are trying to um, institute here. Let, let, let me ask you this question. We have a democratic society like Sierra Leone. You think um, we have? <laughs> well, I'm putting it that way. Um, but, I mean, um, democracy um, advocates would refer to it as incipient. But looking at what we have, where a ruling party and the major opposition political parties do not meet to even um, consult or talk about national issues. Mm -hmm. And when those issues come up, there are always different sides with either one, one party not, not on the table to actually I mean, have their own say on some of these concerns. Where does that put up? Because if you go back to the Bintu Mani Free Conference, the APC was com conspicuously absent, I mean, in the entire process. And for them, they were not invited into, I mean, they were not also consulted in uh, all of the things. And even the document that led to the process was, mm -hmm. I mean, po was politically based. So how then do we ensure that we're able to get the political parties and the ruling party to ensure that the interest is Sierra Leone. I think, I think the fundamental is that the political parties have to buy into the idea of democracy. Mm. It's not about APC or SLPP. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about Sierra Leone. Mm. And we, we need to have a, a plain, uh, um, a, a, a democratic culture which everybody buys into. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the beauty of, of democracy is that we can have um, 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 a disagreement on ideas, on issues, on points, and mm -hmm. so forth. But at the same time, we buy into the, into those tenets of um, um, the, the, the democracy. democracy right. And and sometimes it appears in Sierra Leone that it, politics plays a lot of of part in it, where people do not want to engage in government be, be because it would go against their their party. Uh, uh, um, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and they are also undermines it. If there, is a, if there is a national issue on the peace and, 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 and so forth, I think it's the on, it, it onus is on everyone to get on it. And then we could exchange ideas, mm. you know, and we could come to um, a compromise. At the end of the day, politics is not black or white. There is a midpoint. Mm -hmm. And the midpoint is where most of the time you have um, agreements and it is where we, we, we should actually um, uh, 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 situate our, uh, um, ourselves because when we are at the extreme, we are pulling ourselves apart. Mm -hmm. So um, 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 we have to ensure the, the political parties are fundamental to any democratic states and they are important stakeholders here. But they have to ensure 
that whilst they are fighting their politics amongst themselves, between themselves, that the tenets of democracy are upheld, that we, we, we do not pull ourselves so far apart um, at the seams that we actually destroy ourselves. And that is the point. If, if, if there, there, there is a, a, a provision that opposition parties should be consulted as to who should be um, um, mm. a, a commissioner, of, <laughs> commissioner right. of neck and so forth, let there be seen to have a transparent process where all parties can come together and say yes. We are you, you, you mentioned something in your precursor remark. Um, that is, well, I mean, it could be a ma matter of um, semantics as to, I mean, who interprets or who answers the question what consultation is all about in the constitution. But I mean, for the purpose of good governance and democracy, shouldn't that be perhaps in the form of, a, I mean, in the form of a meeting engagement? Yes, and all I, of I that? don't see any reason why. I, I know they do it. If you go to parliament, the APC yeah. and the APC, they're all together. Mm. I don't see any reason why you cannot call people around and say this is, um, um, you know, you know, the, the the government has the right to choose or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um. Um, open it up and, 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 and you know, so... Uh, do, do, do you think um, parties' interest is above national interest in this case? So, sometimes it is. Mm. And, and it's, it's, really, it's really disheartening in the sense where on issues that should not even be an issue. Mm. You know, we have in all this drama and two in and four in and, and, and so forth. And, and, and at the end of the day, we have one Sierra Leone. You know, party, uh, um, our leaders come and go. Right. The state remains. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, it's, we should all should have a buy-in into democratic values that would develop our country, develop our, ourselves as individuals, our, uh, our economic system, our <laughs> social system, mm -hmm. and so forth. But as now all we can see is about politics, politics, politics. And sometimes we have to bring down the volume a little bit and, and, and see the bigger picture. All right, Sidney, let me bring you in. Um, the government believes that, um, I mean, it did all it could with, I mean, it did um, some due diligence, followed the, the processes and procedures, followed the law as stipulated in the constitution. You were consulted, a letter was sent to you. In fact, in the words of the information minister, he I mean, they ensured that when the signatures were appended to those letters on the 6th of July, they were, they were sent out immediately. So you're just crying wolf, trying to ferment troubles as opposition party. Thank you very much, Samia. I need to take this. Sorry, because yes, I right. don't speak as loud as... Uh, Look, let us first of all premise our discussion on the fact that uh, we are practicing democracy. And the democracy we have now was ushered in through the 1991 constitution, right. uh, which clearly states laws, uh, which clearly states how, which institutions to be set up and how they should be set up, how officials should be appointed or elected to mm. those institutions and the laws that guide those institutions. And then also we have institutions established through acts of parliament, you name them. Yeah. But it is very also clear that where you have conflict through an act and the constitution, the constitution always supersedes. Right. Now, when it comes to this issue, the constitution is very clear in section 33 as to how electoral commissioners are appointed by His Excellency the President. And 33.3 is clear that political commissioners will be appointed to serve, you know, will be appointed by the President after consultation with the leaders of all registered political parties. Mm -hmm. After consultation, with the leaders of all registered political parties. Now the letter we received clearly, first of all, was sent to the Secretary General of the party and he was asked in the letter to inform the chairman and leader that Zainab has been appointed mm. commissioner for Western area. Take note of the content. So those are the words? Yes, he was asked to inform the chairman and leader, 
that Zainab has been appointed commissioner for Western Area, which clearly contravenes the provisions in, in the Constitution. And this is not the first time we have gone through that. Look, Samuel, for us, we've always said this. We haven't even gone to looking at the credentials of Zainab. Right. She's not the issue here. The issue is the constitutional violation. And the framers of our constitution were very, very much deliberate in doing this. Election matters are very sensitive matters. And electoral processes must be transparent, they must be trusted, they must be believable. So when appointing people to manage our election, election affairs, every player, every stakeholder, every individual involved in the election process must trust the electionary process itself. And if you have question about the appointment of individuals, or if you violate the simple provision of the Constitution to consult with parties in appointing people to manage our election affairs, then how do you expect us to trust the election process itself? I always draw um, attention to people who want to argue this to the appointment, appointment of Dr. Christian I'll talk then. Former President Ahmad Tijan Kaba, before appointing Dr. Thorpe, he appointed somebody for her position. But then consult, he, he had somebody in mind. But then because he consulted with political party leaders then, and they had issue with that particular individual then, President Kaba changed his position and appointed <coughs> Madame Thorpe. And we have seen this throughout the appointment of other commissioners in the past. Mm. President, former Dr. Ernest Baikuruma made appointments of his own. He consulted with leaders of political so, so parties. I, the, uh, the question mm. I want to ask, I mean, before going to, again, the constitution, perhaps one would want to see create some, some room for, I mean, some escape room. Because the very constitution, again, states that, um, of course, no, no, no appointment shall be if I had into by any, any individual when the president has made any appointment. So, but before going into that, I want to ask you this question. The, um, Lena mentioned that the fact that the constitution did not state um, what form or shape consultation should take or what consultation generally is all about in that context. Do you, do, do you feel that, I mean, it is justifiable that, let's just inform them, I mean, we, Come on, the, the, the definition of consultation is very simple, Samuel, mm. and clear, precisely. Even if you use the dictionary meaning of consultation, mm. consultation does not mean information. They are completely different. Mm. To inform and to consult is completely different. You know, and in this case, clearly, it is information. We were informed of, that the, appointment. Is, of the appointment. And we were not asked for our opinion or any sort of that. Mm. So we were only told that this is the appointment, she will be going to parliament and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you know, the, the, the thing here is, Samuel, you know, it is not just um, Zainab's appointment. Right. For us, it is disturbing the level of constitutional violations that we continue to see under this current administration. We are talking about democracy here, and democracy is guided by the rule of law. And the supreme rule we have in this country are stipulated in the Constitution of Sierra Leone. Mm. Simple. And the Constitution is very clear, you know, as to, you know, how we go about certain things. I mean, even if you move away from Zainab's appointment, you go to other areas for us. Look at how our members of parliament were removed from parliament. Mm. Look at how, you know, we've seen sitting members of parliament treated. Look at how we have seen people uh, with security of tenure on their appointments being removed from offices. I mean, these are all constitutional violations. So it is not just this pattern of appointment. Mm. Even in other areas, we are seeing violations that have the tendency of undermining our democracy. I'll tell you what, Samuel, no matter how you look at it, 
We have a parliament, as far as we are concerned, that is illegally constituted currently. So, so because we have nine unelected members of parliament and, and is, making and laws that is in our parliament. That is, that, that is um, you know, why I want to come in. When you say your members were illegally um, removed, that was a decision by the highest court of the land. Yeah, but which that perhaps gives it, gives it uh, I mean, legitimacy, gives it I mean, legality. What does the, the, the electoral law say mm. about appeal or petitions when it comes to elections matters? Four months after elections. And when was the, 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 the matter decided on? Over a year after election. These people were in parliament, they were sworn in, they've served as parliamentarians, and then uh, after a year clearly contravening our laws, they were removed. And you know what, again, even the, the timelines for appeal, the appeal and the case was not empaneled for appeal court judges to hear until the time has elapsed. So every step of the way we've seen violations that only continue to undermine our democracy. And for us, that is our concern. The level of impunity we see from this administration as far as constitutional violations are concerned. We do not strengthen our democracy that way, Samuel. Mm. We only weaken our democracy and eventually will eliminate our democracy I mean, that way. Um, it, it, the government is saying due processes have been followed, the law, I mean, has been followed to the letter and, and things like that. And you have now, you've listened to um, CD submission that um, this is a pattern a pattern of violating, breaching the, um, the, the constitution um, precisely and with impunity. And that kills democracy, that kills the rule of law, and definitely that will not go for any um, form of good governance or development in a nation like Sierra Leone. But, but that is what the APC would like us to think. Mm. Yeah? Uh, what do they say? Facts are facts, truths are abiding. Yeah? Uh, in consultations, you can also inform in the process. Mm? I understand that there is fundamentally a difference between information and consultations. Right. But in consultations, mm. you can also inform. Why consulting? Business. So let us not get bogged down with mm. semantics here. Fact of the matter is this. How many political parties do we have? We have about how 17, many, 17 registered how many political parties. How many to say we got our letter a week after? Mm. How many have questioned this entire exercise? Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't believe that we need to allow this nation to get itself into a territory where might is right. It is because it is the APC, and therefore smaller political parties, right, uh, because uh, they do not hold similar positions are treated with contempt. But if, right? if what CD is saying is anything if, to go by, that the letter the government sent to this, um, addressed to the sec um, Secretary General of the APC, telling him to inform the leader and chairman of the party that um, the government has appointed Zainab as Commissioner for Western Region, that is like you telling, you telling me now, um, go and tell, um, Antonia, go and tell uh, Ambassador Navu that um, we'll be coming tomorrow. Look, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is this, uh -huh. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we, can, we can go around in circles for as much as we want, mm -hmm. yeah? Bottom line is, the lawyers will tell you that there's something called the spirit and intent of the law, mm -hmm. yeah? I, I don't think Sid is in a position to determine that. He's yeah. not a lawyer. We would need to go back to some of the, the drafters of this constitution mm -hmm. to determine what that spirit and intent is, right, of that particular provision. Yeah. Because time and again, we continue to have this same argument as to what consultation really means, yeah? But for us, I think we have done the needful. Due diligence has been done. Other political parties, along with the APC and NGC and C4C, have been consulted. That letter, dated on a particular date, yeah, was sent to the APC, the same data sent to every other political party. Now, I think, uh, I mean, he has his own uh, uh, take, well, from a party's point of view as to when they received the letter and, to what, uh, and what the wordings were, and their own subjective interpretation yeah, of, 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 of the contents of that letter. Mm -hmm. It is not the same for every other political party, right? except if he wants to tell me that that position, that interpretation to that letter sent to the APC is the same for every other political party. If there is a fundamental difference, yeah, 
with your position to every other political party, then, I mean, what is this democracy about, right? Shouldn't smaller political parties be acknowledged also, right, for, for holding a view different from a big political party? Mm. Uh, I mean, look, if we want to, and that's the reason why this government, right, continues to be, it's been acknowledged across the globe. The, 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 right, the, the, for the, the take of other political parties, it, it let, me just, let, me just, let, me just, let me just bring in quickly, yeah. let me just bring in quickly. When the APC was in power, I'm aware that um, you have those smaller political parties yeah. Who, I mean, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are grouped, and I mean, they had, they had something that I mean, they always going to support the, the the government. Then I mean, I was privy to a lot of things, and which could not be different from what is happening now. So you have those parties now who will definitely always come in and support your initiatives, your decisions, which does not necessarily mean you're right. I, I think uh, under under this uh, current dispensation, we have been seeing. Uh, political political parties swinging back and forth, mm -hmm. right from positions uh, uh, held by the APC to positions, I mean, in support of government. So I mean, it shows that uh, it, it, it is very much alive this democracy, mm. and that is what we want. It, it is not in every single instance that you expect every single political party, right, to think the same way as government. Mm -hmm. But what is fundamentally important is: Are we doing things to the best of our ability? Are we making sure that procedures are met? Are we doing the needful in consultation? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've had this narrative time and again mm -hmm. by the APC talking about uh, uh, the way uh, MPs were removed uh, and all the rest of it. Look, that was done by the highest court in the land. And there's a precedent. Go back, silly, to Constituency 5 and Constituency 15, right, under the APC government. And what happened, right? That precedent would remain forever in the history of this country to suggest that the law is supreme. And once the judiciary makes a decision, right, it can only be enforced by other bodies, mm. by those relevant bodies, number one. Second, let us take a, an example with uh, the ACC commissioner. Yeah? Mm. Now, they would say he was removed from office. Yeah? But there was another ACC commissioner that was also removed from office. So it's like and that, for was, and that was Joseph F. Kamara. Yeah? Joseph Kamara was removed from office by the previous administration, the previous president. No one questioned it. We're talking about Tom Limits here. What happened to him? Right? The only difference you can state is the fact that he was removed and sent somewhere else, and this one too was removed and not sent somewhere else. <laughs> but again, His Excellency the President came in with a clear mandate. Mm -hmm. right? He campaigned throughout the length and breadth of this country, making his case right for a new scenario a new direction mm. and it was on that basis that he was voted into office now i think the president his excellency should have the latitude and the freedom to choose people that he feels right would pursue his vision and direction mm -hmm. and that is why go back and see what the acc record is now we don't need to talk about those statistics number one second mm -hmm. the reason why two successive years in a row we continue to meet MCC score car threshold, right? Passing it, 11 in the first year, 13 in the second year, is because we have been diligent in the fight against corruption, more so on good governance, I mean, uh, deepening our democratic process. We now have the Peace and Cohesion Commission. Yes, we know that there might be issues, that's something we might be coming to, yes. right, in a while. We know that they, 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 they have, I mean, some concerns around other members. But by and large, largely, the board that has been constituted, right, has been commended right across the board. Okay. That shows we're doing something right, right? Let, and let, whatever let, let we're just doing, quick, let just quickly, we take into let account just the quickly, rule of law. Let me just quickly go sure through this and perhaps right. allow um, Lena to respond to this. Now, Section 32, Subsection 3 of the Constitution states that the members of the Electoral Commission shall be appointed by the President after consultation with the leaders of all registered political parties and subject to the approval of Parliament. Now, so if the, the constitution is saying after consultation with leaders of political parties and the APC, the NGC, C4C are saying that um, they were not consulted, I mean they were told that we have made this appointment and consultation in this context, I mean, evidently does not mean that they have to give the president a concurrence, that they have to agree that, oh, Mr. President, we agree, we do not agree, but mm. you have to consult. You have to engage them and let them understand why, I mean, this is the choice. 
but that was according to them that was not done according to the government it was clearly done due diligence was followed the laws were there but in all of these what does this put Sierra Leone and Democrats well um, <laughs> again we go back and <laughs> forth between the two but at the end of the day we, we have to look at what the constitution says if it says consultation it's consultation mm. and 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 in order for good faith good faith kind of politics you know I, I, we come from i always look at this we come from a background where we've had we've had conflict you know we have we had a civil war we are trying to build up this thing that we call democracy in Sierra Leone. we are trying to um, um, create actual precedents so that we would go back so in 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 some ways these position, especially when you have two of these political parties who are always on their, um, on each other's mm -hmm. method. We have to have that good faith in, in, in if that is what the con constitution says, that, that is what the constitution, um, um, that is what is, um, should be done. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we would not know who is, um, whether they consulted, whether they informed the consul, yeah. whatever. So, but at the end of the day, and I think um, um, for such a position that is very sensitive, that everybody have a stake into, I, I, I go back again, the onus is on the government to show that it has done due diligence. Mm -hmm. and, 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 some, and when it does that, the opposition can't say anything because the oppositions are always looking for something to nitpick. And, and, you, and then without doing that, you create a, a bigger problem for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure that the rule of law, what is in the constitution the, as the supreme law of the land is followed to a, um, a MET. I know the constitution, and everybody has their own say on, um, um, on the constitution. Secondly, I want to go back to a statement um, mm -hmm. um, Imran, yeah. Imran said, mm -hmm. and there are other political parties, but, but, but um, let us be a little bit realistic here. Other political parties are only here, they are only here in Sierra Leone to fight election. That is the only time we, we um, actually see them. But that is what, other, that is what no, other, all political parties do. Yes, that elections. is what they do. Half of the majority of the, in the five years, we don't see them. Not necessarily. Yes, in the five years, the only one that we are seeing now is, is, is NGC. To a, um, a certain extent, but uh, apart from that, we ha when we, there is election, we see all these twenty-something um, 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 political parties, mm -hmm. and as you quite rightly say, most of them go according to the winds of the, um, the incumbents. Politics. Exactly. So the two main political parties. I'm not dismissing any of the other political parties. Please don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the two main stakeholders here. There has to be some sort of consultation between them, and and they, if if the APC feels aggrieved, that they they, they 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 might have a right, mm -hmm. okay. But you cannot say oh because we told the others we are in agreement and we don't. No, no, I I don't think that's a, 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 a thing. We have to have a a, a a process where we include everybody, mm -hmm. even the smallest party, and to the um, um, because the APC is the main um, opposition. Right. Okay, so, so um, um, and for our democracy, if we have these things, these problems at the fray, it undermines it. Because I tell you something, you, you went, again, you went back to what the APC did before. And no, APC, not, not necessarily to what the APC and, did. And I'm APC would go back to what SFPP did before. And it, it's the constant. Theme of our yeah. political system. Well, I go do that because tsunami don't do that. That have been judicial decision. Well, well, um, uh, but you you refer place. to that, and 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 <laughs> um, by doing that, we are pulling at the threads of the democracy, where we will get to the point where, oh, because they did it, we will do it, and at the end of the day, nothing would be achieved. Everything would. Uh, uh, um, um, collapse. Sure, right. I, I'm tempted to ask you this question, Lena, just quickly. As, I mean, as a political scientist, the politics we practice, does, I mean, is it the best system for a nation like Sierra Leone to, to thrive? Yeah, um, um, we can thrive if we have 
and I, I normally say we have to have critical debate, in-depth kind of debate. That is the only way we can strengthen our um, um, democracy. We bring to notice what is wrong, mm -hmm. we try to put it right. And it's, it's a healthy kind of, um, um, of dialogue. And it's right. better to have dialogue than to go um, into um, mm -hmm. um, war and conflict and, and, and so forth. So, it, so for us, we are learning. You know, we have come from a very <laughs> Um, uh, 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 check and pass. So it's something that we are learning as we go along, right. and 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 it's good to have these kinds of debates so, so that the citizens understand the fundamentals. At the end of the day, when we are choosing our political parties, it should not only be based on the color or the tribe or whatever. We should look at these pertinent issues. Mm. You uh, know that. All right, C a, Cindy, uh, Let me ask you this question. Perhaps um, with regards um, Zainab now. They, I mean. The, the, the commissioner herself, I mean, would subject, um, if, should parliament approve, approve her? Um, looking, at, looking at her credential, I mean, there, there have always been complaints about Zainab when she was at PPLC. That, um, in fact, Zainab is a very strong supporter of the SLPP. Zainab is, uh, so, so what does the APC think? For us, you, you know, it is not just about, uh, you know, Zainab as an individual. Mm -hmm. It is about people who get appointed to serve as commissioners, especially at NEC. Mm. You know, our framers of the constitution were very deliberate. We have to ensure that whoever is appointed to serve as commissioner has a lot of experience on elections matters, mm. uh, dealing with elections before. I mean, has uh, some amount of independence as far as uh, you know, partisan independence is concerned. I mean, we all know people belong to a political party, but when you are outrightly partisan, you know, we have to ensure that that is not the case. Mm. And you know, in, I find it interesting. In this, in the past, we've seen, you know, some kind of you know career growth as far as you know neck is concerned, because mostly people who were appointed, you know tend to have served in the commission, you know, grew in positions mm -hmm. until they were appointed commissioners. But we've seen people being appointed outside, and that is not what the law says. I mean, the law is not mm -hmm. against that, but I'm, we're just curious as a party. So it is not so much just about Zainab, you know, but people who get appointed to positions like those. I mean, we are in, um, these are sensitive positions. Mm -hmm. uh, these are positions we expect holders of offices uh, to have some amount of integrity, some amount of, of you know, independence and uh, a lot of experience in hand. Because elections could lead us to chaos if they are not handled properly. And that is why, you know, this is not something uh, we should take lightly. This is not something we should address on partisan basis. And I just want to correct Imran. There has never been a judicial precedent wherein we've seen MPs removed from parliament and other MPs appointed by the courts in the past. No. They always make reference to lawyer Ansu Lansana's case. Lawyer Ansu Lansana's case is completely different from what we saw happen to lawyer Osman Timbo and others. Lawyer Ansu Lansana was petitioned by an independent candidate even before the election. Mm. And the court ruled even before the elections that he was not qualified and even instructed Neck to remove him from the ballot. But whether the time was short going into elections, mm -hmm. Neck was not able to do that, so he remained on the ballot, even where the court had ruled that he be removed from the ballot until we went into elections. So as far as that issue was concerned, he was not even supposed to be on the ballot in the first place. Mm -hmm. So this is completely different. So you cannot refer to that as a judicial precedent as it relates to the case of the nine MPs removed from office. And let us not forget, you know, it is very much important now that we are talking about democracy and the rule of law here. Let us not forget that the Constitution established institutions to guide our governance process. We have the judiciary that 
you know, has its own laws and its own independence defined by our constitution. Mm -hmm. You have our parliament, it has its own laws and its standing orders that guide their proceedings in parliament. And then you have the executive. In parliament, now, we even have problem with the way the speaker was elected. That is questionable. So everything about our parliament as we move forward in these five years <laughs> has some amount of you know, legal questions, you know. I mean, so we have a lot of work to do. I think we need really some serious national dialogue on some of these issues. If we want to strengthen our democracy, for me as a young man, yes, I am the spokesperson for APC, the, op the main opposition. But what I am interested in, and a lot of us, and even our party, is to strengthen our democracy in a way that will continue to be enviable moving forward. We've gained a lot of accolades. Is that, is that, is that, is that sincere? Because it is very you've been in power is, and these are the same things it is you've, very, been, it you've is, been doing. It I mean, is, this is the allegation. You see, that's the yes. whole point. It is very sincere. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, Samuel, let us, you see, you see this is where, you know, maybe, our country mm. should have some hope that uh, we see people, certain people getting interested in politics. And I will hope that we'll have more people with sincerity and integrity and credibility become more interested in politics. And I will also encourage us, mm -hmm. young people particularly, I see no reason why we should not be able to address issues on bipartisan basis. Mm. If we feel it is wrong, it is wrong by law, by statute or whatever. Mm. If it is right, it is right. And we should be able to call it wrong if it is wrong. All right. And we should also be able to call it right Asil if it Asil is Asil right. Asilina <laughs> wants to have a bite. I, I just quickly. wanted to say because you asked and said if it's, if it's sincere. And that, is, that question alone tells us that we have a problem where people don't think the political parties are sincere. Right. And, and the reason why people don't think they're sincere is because of past actions. Mm. Everybody doing this, when you come, I'll do this. Right. You know? So but, but at the end of the day, we have to ensure that, as, as he quite rightly says, that we, we build the structures of our democracy. Political parties are the essential components of that. Mm. And if we, as citizens, cannot trust our political parties to do the right thing, then our democracy is in, is in peril. It is important. If we go back to the, in the, the, the point on um, um, appointment, yeah. and I know you're coming to that, uh, to, to, to that but we're talking uh, um, about the, also the appointment of the Peace, Peace Commission Com yes. as well. Yeah. And over the, I don't know whether it's true, but over the um, social media, we've seen appointment letters. What does that say? The act of the Peace um, uh, Commission says that it's the board that should appoint. But if you see in letters of appointment, it pleases the, the president, then we have a serious problem there. It's have a serious problem because you're basically undermining the whole thing as, as well. Mm. You're compromising the, the whole process. Mm. So it is a fundamental um, uh, process that we ensure that when political parties are in power, the, uh, the things that they grumble with about when they are in opposition, they do not do. Right. And that is, that is the fundamental problem. It comes back to you asking if they are sincere. Mm. If they are sincere, let us do the right thing because this thing is for all of us. One, one quick point. One Go quick ahead. Point. Number one, no party has won an election. No presidential candidate has won an election by appointing a neck commissioner, right? There is enough history in this country to suggest Right, that having a net commissioner right in place for an election doesn't mean you're going to win an election. Ultimately, the seven million people in this country at every given opportunity have voted for someone in their view at that material point in time that they feel will take the country forward. In, two, they did in, that two, in, in, 2000, in 2007, 2007, your party, your party actually accused the, not the commissioner of NEC for actually giving the election to APC. F f fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. right, there was an election, yeah. a result was announced, and ultimately, 
right, because we were in power prior to 2007 right. and that there was a net commissioner, mm -hmm. right, did not mean that that election was won by us, right? It's the same for 2018. So there is enough history to suggest that a net commissioner in place does not mean that that presidential candidate or government will win an election. Here's the point, here's the point. Ultimately, I think we, we're under, underestimating right, the, 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 the ability of 7 million people in this country, right, the ability to understand and, 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 and make a decision as to who Right, is going to be their president from 2023. Going are, are, we kicking, are we kicking away? Are we kicking, are we kicking away? Are, 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 we, are we kicking away features election of elec elections started. rigging and things like that? And, and those we, are we, the things that can actually manipulate. I mean, electioneering processes. We, not we even are in going, Sierra Leone. If I just make my point, very go quickly. ahead. We are going into the next election mm -hmm. based on those manifesto commitments. Yeah, in 2018, we are going into the next election based on the character and caliber of His Excellency the President Gitar Brigadier Julius Madabio. We are going into the next election based on what we have set out to achieve so far, mm -hmm. right, and how far we have come since 2018. That is what would determine whether His Excellency the President will be elected again in 2023, and I have no doubt he's going to have a two term. I've had a lot of people who did not vote for him in 2018, continue, I mean, uh, telling me, mm -hmm. right, and continuing to suggest that they feel he deserves a second term, right? It's for the people to decide in 2018 18 and it is totally unconnected look udm we know and other political parties have celebrated the fact that zainab Mossi right is the western area i mean regional chair for NEC. they have right they feel she's qualified she's capable she's the right person to be in that position honorable chair koko in parliament did not question uh, 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 the next chairman he did not he said by his calculation when they were in college uh he had the view then that he was SRPP, but there's nothing at that material point in time when he was being confirmed in Parliament to suggest that he was still a SRPP. He hoped he was not. And that uh, clarification was made by uh, uh, the next chairman that has nothing to do with any political party. Mm -hmm. Look, what do they say? Politics ends at the water's edge. Yeah? Let, us, let us get a bit serious, right? Walk, I mean, as a political party, right, deal with your internal strikes and struggles, right, get a candidate to go into the next election, right, that candidate will determine whether you win or lose. And, and, and let us not sink this whole thing to uh, 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 who has been appointed and who has not been appointed. Ultimately, mm -hmm. have we done the needful based on the constitution of the republic? Has the president consulted? What does consultation really mean? If you see an alter order and say consultation are caught by a business? It could mean by telephone call, it could be by text message. There's several means. I mean, this is. But were they done? This, this, look, that, that, that is why I keep coming back. That is why I keep coming back to what the spirit and intent of the Constitution was. At the time we had the 1991 Constitution, right, we were not in the technological age. This is the 21st century. And there are so many other means, right, to consult. Right, that you could add now but were to those what the means, original meaning I mean, were of those what means you think utilized? Was. Were those oh, means absolutely, utilized? Oh, absolutely, so absolutely. Absolutely. President to the, the point, leaders the, of those the, the political point I'm parties. Making is, the point I'm making is, let us not narrow down the interpretation of what it means to consult. <laughs> I'm saying this is the 21st century. <laughs> right. And there are so many ways it to consult. Look, look, it doesn't necessarily have to be in look, a Tangis format. No. Look, <laughs> look, century look, look Samuel, you know, I, I, I see my my, my brother trying to shift the discussions to from the process to the individuals appointed. No. You see, for, for us, we see this as very serious, you know, situation. Now, we are talking about elections. And let us not fool ourselves. We all know how much tension we do have in this country during electioneering mm. period. We even see instances where in certain political parties are not allowed to campaign freely in certain areas. And now if we have the commission that is supposed to oversee and manage our election process being questioned in this manner as to people heading that commission. And if the main political parties have problems with the composition, with the individuals that have been charged with the responsibility to manage our 
uh, election, I think we ought to take it seriously, all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe Imran has not taken time out to really study the current structure of NEC as it is, from the commission, commissioners to the directors to even people who are the district elections officers, now district elections managers as they call them. It will interest you to know that out of the 16 district election managers we have in this country, you have only one northerner among them. No westerner, the rest are from southeast. These are people that are going to be conducting our elections at that level. And what does that mean? It already is there. I mean, I didn't know. No, no, it is Thank skewed you. in favor of one political party. We all know. We all know that. I mean, these are the kind of things. I mean, why, when you go back to 2018, you look at the same structure. It was balanced. You have... 20% western area, for example, 25% north, 30% south, 30% east. That is what you expect. And it is not just neck. When you look across this country now, that is similar in every institution. Oh, it is disturbing. No, we have to highlight okay. these mm, things. We're point. talking about democracy here. Right. And these are our institutions. This is our country. Every institution must be inclusive and representative enough to a point that we can trust the process. The appointments... As you talk about that, as you talk about that, let me bring in now the next, um, I mean, issue on, on board. We, we still, still, I mean, with your point. Yes. Um, the, at the, at the Bintumani Free Conference, the, the expert from Kenya mentioned that um, there should be a system that the Peace Commission should set up a mechanism that no particular tribe should have more than 30%, I mean, in any institution. So there should be a form of tribal audit in all of those institutions. So as you say that, and um, with the Peace Commission now that is supposed to actually address all of those concerns and ensure that, I mean, we have national cohesion and all of that. Commissioners of appointments have been made, which according to um, Ibrahim Tomi of Cal those appointments should be reversed because, I mean, they breached the very act that established, I mean, the, the, the commission. So where do, where, what's the level of, of trust now do you have in that commission? I mean, that is even where some of us, you know, begin to question, you know, as to whether people, certain people who are leading us really have understanding of what democratic governance means. Because I don't understand how you can violate your own act. You establish the Peace Commission. It is clearly through the Act of Parliament. And the, 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 the laws are stipulated clearly that the commissioners should be appointed by the board. You know, and here we are, we've seen appointments. Now people have been served letters going clearly against the very act that established the commission. So how do you expect us to trust in such process? And it is not just with even the appointment. The whole process of how the pe I mean, this is an institution that is supposed to bring all of us together. If you go back to Bintumani 3, just go back and look at the speeches mm -hmm. delivered by the leaders, by the stakeholders, by representatives of government. They blame games in those speeches. I mean, how do you expect every sector of society to be comfortable enough to be part of that which is supposed to build consensus among us? That which is supposed to bring all of us together in peace and unity? You've already are in the process of you know, establishing this framework. You've already cast the blame on APC. You've blamed the past leaders of APC for all the wrongs that have happened in this country. But I always tell people this. If we are to apportion blames, we can go as far back as the 60s. But the fact of the matter is, the democratic dispensation that we have now it's not what we had back then. It's completely different. The governance structures that we have now, we didn't have then. We have international laws that guide our democracy, our rule of laws, you know, that we did not have back then. So we cannot 
continue to glue ourselves in the past and continue to do wrong blaming the past. But no. should you not be blamed for boycotting the, the, the conference? Well, I mean, how for, can you for attending a very sensitive how, I mean, conference like that that seeks I mean, uh, to the peace and national cohesion of a nation like Sierra Leone? How can you boycott something that you are not invited to? <laughs> <laughs> you Samuel, know, how can, Samuel, how, how can you boycott uh, something that you are not invited to? It, 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 you have to be invited to boycott. Okay. We were never invited. Let me let me make this yeah, clear. A letter was sent I to. Think we, I think we should blame Salpos. <laughs> <laughs> a letter was sent to uh, uh, APA mm -hmm. through the Ministry of Political. And, um, and public affairs inviting APA, a representative from APA, right. to the Peace Commission. Mm -hmm. A representative from APA to the Peace Commission. And you, your party holds the, the most powerful office in that association? A, a representative. We are not chairing APA. It's PD, it, uh, PDP. So if you ask for a representative, so among the 70 political parties, you only ask for one person to be represented through APA. So how can you come and say APC boycotted? We invited them, they didn't show up. No, we were never invited as a political okay. party. W what's what? government defense, I mean, to this accusation? Now, we, look, I mean, he said something about tribe, yeah, and I feel, I feel despondent about it. I have to be very honest. In what way? Yeah? Because when we sit here, the three of us, Right, as educated as we are, well, you want for things, so at least we get basic OIA levels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that will begin to degenerate a discussion to tribe, right? Or, or maybe we, we did not do history in school, none of us. But my history tells me that what we have are regional boundaries, yeah, the demographics are completely different, the dynamics, right? And the demographics in this country are completely different. Yeah. I'm a Sila. From Muemba Yawema. Hmm? I'm originally a Madingo. But because Muemba is home for me, I'm considered to be a Southerner. My maternal side, my interest is to not Nakuyo, my mama and papa. Right? But his maternal side, her maternal side, now from Potlok or Kafubuno. I, I mean, I just, it's something I don't, I don't like to get into. That, that is and a, that is a given, but when it comes and, to politics, I'll, do, you, I'll, do, you, do you write that off? I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you the have tribe, tribes but, that, are, but, but, that, but, that can be linked to a political I mean, parties? But, but this is what pains me. Go ahead. This is what pains me. I went to St. Edward's secondary school alongside people like Suleiman Bobo Kaba, Afrikano Sorisise, Sonkita Conte, Ahu, Efe Bundu, uh, Rama Jalo, whose father was running me to in 2002. Never at any point did we have any discussion around tribe. Never. Suddenly, because some of us are political actors now, mm -hmm. it is all too convenient, despite the education, despite the history and demographics of this country, knowing that all we have are regional boundaries and that those, demogra those demographics suggest something completely different because it is convenient for us to sit and talk about tribe. You know, when I was in opposition, throughout all my time criticizing the former president, Anas Bayakroma, I never once mentioned tribe that people were appointed based on tribe. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because I ought to know better, right? As a politician, it is my responsibility to turn down the rhetoric. Something you started off with. Samuel. Turn it down. I hope I'll you give it time. Let I think it, 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 is, it is misleading. Mm -hmm. It is disingenuous. It mm -hmm. is dis dishonest to 7 million people in this country. The least we owe them is to be civil and respectful would, and not treat them like Just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, would you not link the SLPP to the Southeast? Which, I mean, many reports have come out. I mean, the, the politics of strongholds, the APC, the Northwest, Sa would Sa you not link that? Sa Samuel, probably I think we need to get up a bit on our history. Mm. Yeah? Uh, because uh, the, the, my history and the history of this country suggest mm -hmm. that the SLP was actually formed by Northerners. Given. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand. Agreed. So what are we talking about? Shaka Stevens was a man born in Moyamba district, mm -hmm. right, who became the first president uh, and leader of the APC. So, of that's, so, so, that, so, so that's the irony of about? the current practice of both political what parties, are we talking about? the APC Look, and the SLPP. Let, 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 for, in the let, first, let, let, us, let us get back to, 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 to more serious things, things that would help to, 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 
to the peace to, commission to, to let's talk about the peace commission things that would help us to to, to get the respect that let's we talk about the peace commission right, from the international community right uh, been to many three every political party right took part been to many three with the exception of the apc but you, you know I, I have a friend mm -hmm. we're very close mm. and and he's apc he comes to my office from time to time and he played no small part in the previous administration mm -hmm. we sat down one day i mean over lunch and he was saying to me say me brother he said, me party, he said, I've been there long enough. He said, one thing I can guarantee is, he says, he says, the APC is very intense politically, right? There are no small, there are no small games, not to like FA League and Carlin Cup or whatever. For them, everything is just intense. It's all about politics. That's all they know, you know? And, 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 and for, for, for a moment, I sat there thinking to myself, ah, now I understand. I hope you understand. But, he might have his own views, and mm -hmm. that might not necessarily mm -hmm. be the views of Sidi Tunis and others in mm -hmm. the APC. But that's the feeling I continue to have. I think we all owe it to the people of this country to turn down the rhetoric, right, and let us have a civil conversation. One thing I can guarantee is that mm -hmm. His Excellency the President is keen to listen, right, loves to interact with members of other political parties. Mm -hmm. He has done so several times. He has been out of this country on trips with members of other political parties. That shows his tolerance level. Would you, ag would you agree that the appointment, the letters being sent to, I mean, people who have been appointed, I mean, the decision to appoint them um, violates the very acts that, I mean, um, brought the commission into, in, in, into effect? Now, I mean, let us, let us acknowledge a few things. Mm -hmm. yeah? Number one, I think uh, the Peace and Cohesion Commission was something uh, suggested by the TRC. Right. Yeah? And uh, since then, no government before now has taken time to actually do the needful and make sure that we have this commission in place. Mm -hmm. So this government have, have been able to achieve that, right, in three years, right? Uh, uh, true to form, His Excellency the President would always fulfill his manifesto commitments, number one. Second, there has been board members been appointed, yeah? And uh, two to form, we haven't had any disquiets uh, with those appointments, right? But then, you know, we, 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 we live in a society, in a thing called democracy. Yeah, I mean, from time to time you hear, I mean, concerns and, 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 and uh, uh, well, probably, uh, and, and, and concerns and different take as to whatever the president does. It is allowed, it is acceptable. But what I can guarantee is that this president Right, would listen and listens very well, right? And we continue to take every single view on board. We may, we may not necessarily arrive, I, I mean, at, 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 at an end point or decision that, that, that uh, they would like, mm -hmm. right? But that's, that, that, that's why he, he was elected into office. Not every decision he takes, not every position he takes will be accepted by everybody, mm -hmm. but has to be respected and acknowledged. And we, in turn, understand that we live in a democracy the other political parties and that whatever they say right has to be taken right and looked at and looked into we try to get the politics out of it and see the value of those statements mm -hmm. right and that is what we live does, by does that, that is our mantra does that bring relief the fact no, that he says I mean, it does not it does. You, you you're just you're, you're just adding a little bit of salt and pepper and trying to cook a good soup but but f M -M -M -M, frankly the, the question we should be asking, who advised the government to make those appointments? Because we, um, the rule of law um, and ensures that the government is accountable to the people. Mm. Okay? And if a bad decision has been made, as Tommy said, it should be reversed. And whoever advised the, gov um, the president to make the decision should be accountable. Mm. Either he, he, he is sacked or he resigns or, or whatever. But we know that doesn't happen in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. so, so that is the fundamental of it. Because one, as I, go, as I say again, you have an act. The act says the board shall appoint the, 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 the commissioner. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. But then we see um, um, appointment letter. What does that tell, what does that tell us? as people of Sierra Leone. It tells us that the, the constitution is not being adhered to. So the constitution, okay? So, so it, it is important. These are the things that undermines democracy in Sierra Leone. Because come APC next, uh, 2020, 2023, or whenever, whatever, they will do the same thing. 
And what trust the, would people have in the commission anyway? Mm. In the commission, that commission is an, an important um, um, institution. Okay, what trust do ordinary Sierra? I'm, I'm not looking it from APC or SPP, mm -hmm. but the fundamentalist is the people of Sierra Leone because we are the one who goes out, go out there and vote. Yeah, and if we don't trust our leaders to do the right thing when they are in power, as I said before, we have then we have a fundamental problem. Okay, so so why should letters of appointment be out when we know that it's the board that appoints the commissioners. It's not done. It should not be done. Mm. And governments have to take responsibility for that. They have to be accountable um, um, uh, to us. Because in opposition, if, if the opposition in power, when they're in power, do the same thing, they will be the first one crying um, 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 uh, um, and so on. So we have to ensure that what we do, we do it for the benefit of the broader picture of, the, mm -hmm. of, um, um, of Sierra Leone. At the end of the day, this is, it is it's fundamental to us. The rule of law is one of the, the, the main pillars of the, 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 the democracy. And when people start to violate it, it undermines us. It, we don't have trust in the system. Mm. We, it, 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 it is very important. It, it is fine that the, the um, 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 you're going by your um, man with first one and so forth. Well, at the end of the day, it is not, we are not looking at the personality here. We are looking at the process, due process, mm -hmm. that we, uh, we adhere to what is down in the Constitution and we ensure that it is followed. Right. Just quickly before I, 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 I take um, our viewers and our listeners, before bringing them in a the conversation, uh, Sidi, um, you had wanted to um, <coughs> respond to um, a statement made by Imran. And with, with all of this, um, is, it, is it not right that um, you let the process go and assess whether or not, I mean, the commission would fulfill its mandate? I mean, if the, if, if, if the, the process of even appointing people to serve is wrong, I mean, how do you expect you know, uh, 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 the commission to be able to fulfill its mandate independently. I mean, there is, you know, we see something deliberate in all of this. <coughs> What's that? And that is, one, somebody probably is rushing because of some political reason or so, and two, control. That is all what this is about. The, the, the government wants to have total control of institutions, so they want to ensure that they have people they appointed, they have people that, you know, can do things the way they want. I mean, that is what this is all about. Uh, and, and, and this is where we come in, because that is not what strengthens democracy. And I was just going That's to ask, where does that put democracy? Because yourself, for example, I mean, um, as a party, you've been there. And those are the things you, you've been accused of practicing over and over again. Now that you're not there and you, you, you think that the right things should be done, where does that put democracy? I mean, this is the excuse. But, you know, sometimes it is, it, it is also good to look at instances and look at the gravity, mm. you know, uh, of... of what we see happening now as to where people want to draw, you know, inferences or make references to, you know, past activities that have uh, happened. But uh, <laughs> these are institutions that, you know, we are establishing to, to strengthen our democracy, to bring us together. I mean, before even the Peace Commission, we had another commission that was established, National, National Civic mm, the council, National council. council. I mean, the, the council National Civic Education. Council could have easily done that job it, if it was really that effective, uh, you know, in changing our mindset as a nation, in preaching cohesion, in preaching peace, you know, and in educating, you know, the public about national service, patriotism and all nationalism and all of these things. You know, but of course like like I you know I've been saying here, because some of these 
appointments and the processes leading to these appointments are so partisan and players are not allowed to really make inputs because of political reason we get them wrong and we'll continue to get them wrong and it is the same and let me say this quickly Imran Nobody talked about tribe here, but the fact of the matter is... The insinuations. No, listen. <laughs> that's what you're getting at. The fact of the and matter right. is, mm -hmm. we, 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 we live in a country where political parties, you know, support base are along regional lines. And so, as a nation and as governments, we owe it to the people of this country to ensure that we always try to strike that balance. And that is what we have seen with past governments. Because if we want to avoid what could further divide us, we have to address these issues. If okay. we are talking about a commission for peace and national cohesion, we should not be ashamed to point out an institution that is not regionally balanced as far as its staff, its composition, and everything about that institution are concerned. Okay. We should not be ashamed of some right. discussions. Let's bring, let's, bring Those our, are realities. let's bring in our viewers and our listeners. The number to call is um, plus 232-3062-766. Plus 232-3062-766. 030 Amara Al from Facebook is saying the rule of law um, defended by an independent judiciary plays a crucial function by ensuring that civil and political rights and civil liberties are safe and that the um, equality and dignity of all citizens are not at risk. And indeed, this is what we see as um, Sierra Leoneans in our judiciary. The system is absolutely independent under the leadership of President Bio, and the train <laughs> is moving. <laughs> Abu Konte is in expecting a honest opinion from um, okay I'll be <laughs> keeping I mean those <laughs> disrespectful messages I, I'll take all the messages um, that speak to um, the issues yeah um, good evening AYV on Sunday good evening Samuel how are you I'm doing great your name and where are you calling us from sir I'm basically calling from Brookfield go ahead okay so I want to ask this question to both in the and and, and don't they think that it is about time that parties started institutions from being politically elected? And don't they think that is one way they can help us create a level playing field and, and ignore all of this back and forth, this person that's using this person and this person that's using this person? And, and for once, for once in life, won't these parties be frank with opinions as they give it out? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. Yeah, hello? Good evening. Yeah, how are you? Fine, sir. Your name and where are you calling us from? Uh huh? Your name and who side you call me from? Yeah, I call from Free Thai Concerned Citizen. Go ahead. Yeah, um, are they listening uh, uh, are they, that order? I will represent the government. Mm hmm. Uh, it's in his life, 295. When he talks the two, he didn't make the devil be ashamed. That's it because he didn't have a particular organization. If they do bad, he will wait for token. Token, if they touch you, you don't mean nothing. Now God did it up. Not to Mortaman. The Mortaman has not appointed you. You know, if they talk of, they don't know about you, the, the rules of the law, the constitution, a big pass, or even to the president, the constitution, big pass. But what do they see in this government? There are so many breaches. When they value too much, you know, they don't value beaucoup things than the constitution. Okay. You understand? And um, if you talk of tribes, say, um, since you know they talk about tribes, is that let me check if they talk to, they check it. The young party and young government will be from the president take to even so we're not no, 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 uh, um, accuse uh, people about tribalism. We need to talk about tribalism. Um, good evening, AYV on Sunday. Hello, uh, good evening. Good evening, your name and who side you call me from? Um, this is single who calling from Madonna Street. Go ahead, sir. What's your take? Yeah, um, my take on um, the discussion there is like, um, you know, I want my panelists there, especially, um, 
be there to me, to understand that governance is a process. We know all is not right and there is no perfect government. But what is essential is that when the government listens, I think all constitutions are going to be taken apart. But at the same time, I don't want him to be oblivious of the fact that when he mentioned the National Council for Civic Education, that it is partisan and that is why political parties are not represented, is not true. Because I can tell you for a fact that the head of the strike committee there is Dr. Dennis Bright. And he is playing the people's role, and there are other members of parliament for other political parties that are represented. In fact, what I have not seen, and which for me is a shame, because I have never seen the APC participating in their activities as I watch on TV or dread discussion. So moving forward, I think what they need to do as an opposition is how to come on board and help this government to succeed, because that is what we as Iranians will need. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we can accommodate at most five more calls. Um, good evening, AYV on Hello. Sunday. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you? I'm doing good. Your name and where are you calling us from? My text and I call from Freetown. Go ahead. Hey, now one thing with the Ambagui Police Program here. Where there is a trap of education for not to understand, some people are about the debate attention, and they can go back. Don't forget to get alone. Unless and until we check with in the constitution, that is the same for them, that's what we for the power. That is uh, a government not spent a lot of money for me then. Therefore, we build this constitution. I am. This is on Japan, it's common power. This is not Japan now. In this country now, we don't get a system now. Everybody can go to interpret the constitution. You don't see? So until, therefore, we build this constitution, I am. This country, I am. And the same way we go for the power now. So okay. now I go back to the power we come up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, AYV on Sunday. Hello. Hello, caller. Yeah, good evening. Please stay away from your TV or radio set. Yeah, no, no, it's Ryan Bangura. And the call from London. Go ahead. The concern now uh, with regards to the representative of the government. Go ahead, so, sir. In statement, it clearly should say in the defense. <laughs> But the sincerity lacking. We are the concerned you will be the measure in the program. How an institution is organize a particular election? One sided as far as the tribe of that country is concerned. Second one is go to the host of the program we in a family. You will know the country. That's an issue. You not get for the sentiments. They call the state the state. Institution of that nature is not for the one sided as far as the tribe of this country is concerned. It's as if this particular institution, they don't already tag them, saying that this is your kind of defense. I'm not going to play football, no, no. all you want to play against, that this team they did. They come out from this country. So we will just get together and we say from different, different countries, we expect for no day in the form of what we know that people are so let the government representative not be sincere. Okay. If we're not sincere for staying on the institution, then now we'll get a better salary. Thank you. It's so pathetic and the concern now is let them be sincere. The Thank you. Let, let's now take um let's now take international calls. Um good evening, AYV on Sunday. Hey, I'm a warrior. How you doing? Doing great. How are you, sir? Okay, good. Um great contribution. Go ahead. You see, um, at times we, 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 we talk on the issue as if we don't know where the problem lies. And we, we, um, I'm listening to Brother Tunis complaining about the power of the presidency, basically. But he forgot that his party gave the presidency too much power with the Samsumana case. By right, President, they don't even need to consult them because of that case. So we need to be very serious in that country. That power that was given to President Kroma as a supreme executive in that Samsumana case basically undermined that clause within that constitution as to consultation. President Biro didn't even need to consult them. Okay. So Mr. Tunis needs to go back and, 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 and maybe talk to Honest by Kroma as to why that happened. Okay. Why his party did that. Thank you. you know? Thank you. So we need to be serious. Thank you. Let's go to the Netherlands from the U.S. Good evening, AYV on Sunday. Hello. Hello. Are you with us? 
Hello, caller. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, but I'm listening. Um, I just want to um, uh, throw light on the issue of uh, what is going on and to really know exact. Good evening. Good evening. Bye. Go ahead, boss. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes. Good. Um, what I want to uh, talk about the issue, the trend that is going on in Sierra Leone, the issue of trust. Um, we in Sierra Leone, and we have lost trust and integrity. When I'm listening to the panelists, these people are not really honest with the Sierra Leone. Uh, we keep on saying something that is completely not true. And we keep on saying something that is completely contrary to our laws. So I think they are really keep on misleading us. And I, some of those things we need really to tell these people that you are there to represent with the Syrian Union. And when you are there, not that you have everything, you should really seek the interests of with the Syrian Union. Okay. See what is truth and lead us into a better future. And also the, the issue of not really prioritizing things. I think those are the things that really bother me with the Syrian Union. All right. And we, for you also, I want to advise sometimes when we listen to talk to these people, try to really inform them that they are talking to the general, to the world. <laughs> Let them be honest. All right. Yeah. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you have to be honest, you're talking to these people. <laughs> All right, quickly, let me just go on a um, few messages. I'm not going to take any, um, I mean, the calls, it, it, it's, it's enough uh, for tonight. Ibrahim Chakemba is saying, one thing I know for sure is that everything President Bio is doing, APC would always oppose. Even if um, when it rains heavily, APC would tell you that President Bio is responsible for uh, too much rain in Sierra Leone. Um, okay. Um, it was, um, okay, I'm not going to take that. Um, Imran, Imran, please um, define for us the term consultation so that we can better understand Mark Kuruma is saying. Um, Chelno Ebari, thank you. We'll get a technical team to work on that, yeah? Um, can we really say, Mr. Imran, indeed, there are many political parties in Sierra Leone, but there are only two main political parties, which are the APC and the SLPP. Therefore, of the two, anyone in governance needs to be patriotic in um, decision-making. Else, the back and forth shall always be in our political spectrum. Um, CD Tunis, um, okay, um, okay, I'm not going to take that, uh, Masaryoko, we have to be respectful, um, well, this is, um, Eddie Grant is, 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 is pleading that, um, you, you take off the mask so that they can actually get better of what you're saying, she's preventing, the, I mean, <laughs> Corona, um, Eddie. The country, the country, uh, the country's democracy is going normal for the ordinary citizens. But if you ask the opposition, they will tell you that our democracy, under the leadership of President Bill, is turning, I mean, um, their head, and it gives them massive pain and stress. My advice for every political party is that I want all of you to come together and work with the current government to develop Sierra Leone, so that you would have less pain and headache. Because the more you're criticizing the government, the more the leaders are becoming slow and stupid. Um, by that, so the country will slow to develop for the benefit of our unborn um, children. 120 Sierra Leoneans are suffering in Guinea Conakry prisons. They have been there for nine months now. We need your aid, AYV, Prosper Karim Conte. Okay, would we'll follow up on that. Manasi is saying, I wonder what um, what city would say in regards to the rule of law as um, is government then the APC in history has no respect for the rule of law. Anyway, we're listening. Um, even though tomorrow's election is to be held, even if tomorrow, um, elections are to be held tomorrow, um, APC would lose, okay. Um, this is about civilized citizens of Sierra Honestly, with all the, um, I'm trying so hard, but it's so difficult for me. One basic tenet of democracy um, that needs to be upheld is the rule of law that enhances good governance, which is popularly missing in our new dispensation. I'm strong, I'm, uh, I strongly believe appointment of certain nature needs consultation. Brahma Conte, a very key point, Lena Thompson, political parties come and go, but the state remains. It tells us that for our democracy to, um, okay, that does, we need it. It's not complete, Abu Conte, please. 
Um, the fundamentals of democracy have been trampled on by both parties in the history of Sierra Leone politics. It seems that the Constitution is a smokescreen for political parties to use on its electorate in their favor. There is nothing in the Constitution for the people, only for the political parties in government, uh, political party in government, which happens to be the SLPP. We've seen the same attitude in the APC when they had the mandate. This leaves a sour taste in the mouth of those who believe in transparency, which is not being adhered to. Oh, Salon, that's from Ronald George Stone. Um, Pat Kikubu is saying, what's very clear is that um, us, the normal people, are fighting these politicians' um, cases for one reason or another, but yet nothing changes. Um, five more messages. We have hundreds of them, unfortunately. Time will never permit me to go through all of them, and I hope you guys will understand. Um, Imran City has the right to use, um, okay, no, we're not going down that lane. Um, Idea-wise, let's go back to the drawing board. We want honest um, peace move and not a defense stage. Malik from Guinea-Bissau is saying Abdul Malik Kamara from Guinea-Bissau. Um, the point here is if the past government has done mistakes, the present should refrain from um, repeating them, but rather doing better. That's growth in democracy. Joseph Ibrahim B. Sankor is saying. Um, the more messages are political leaders believe in defending their parties than the interests of the country. Ibrahim Espa is saying. Um, you have to forgive me. I'm struggling to actually figure out the messages I should read because um, the political ones are so many. Um, I know Abu Conte. Uh, um, yeah, I know what you're saying, but again, I have to be very, very mindful yeah, of what I take on air. Polkani is saying, from the inception of the government, um, they have been bastardizing our constitution. We would have had a better governance system wherein the opposition has the majority in parliament. There comes in consultation and lobbying as its practice in Western democracy. Okay. Um, I know Bobo Labo, thank you very much. Um, our ICT team will definitely look into that and see what they can come up with um, to get rid of some of these guys. Uh, indeed, it's all about control, which has been the habit of both your parties. Like the lady said, when you come into government, you do the same as the SLPP. So nothing is new. Our electorate um, needs to wake up in who you vote into office because you deserve the government you vote into power. Remember, Ronald George Stone, and um, two more messages to go. Two more messages to go. Um, appointment without following due process is a very unfortunate situation for our fragile democracy. Zainab Sharif Bangura is saying, um, Western democracy campaigning on black. Um, OK, um, I will leave that. I won't take that. Um, the last message I will take is saying, Samuel, you would find it very difficult to navigate your way, though, because some of these messages are out of topic indeed, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you for understanding me. <laughs> All right. I think we have to hold the messages there. Um, and just quickly from Jonathan, good evening, AYV on Sunday. If we're talking about rule of law, is it right um, for citizens living in the country to obey the rules and regulations? That is the 1991 constitution, but even the two part political parties are not obeying it. So um, there is no one to be blamed. The blame goes to all the parties. OK. Um, we have to come back to the guests and allow them to respond. I'll start off with you, Imran, um, res your response to our viewers and listeners. Well, uh, the first one I'll pick up on is, uh, I mean, there are a few comments that have come in mm -hmm. right, suggesting uh, what uh, city right was insinuating about tribe and region, mm -hmm. and hence the reason why I cautioned hmm? mm -hmm. us here, because we have a responsibility. Because when city speaks, yeah, people listen to him. Yeah, it, it is not because he's city, but he's city that belongs to a political party, mm -hmm. and political parties are there to shape opinions. But it could also, I mean, very easily, right, turn to something else if we don't guard. I mean, the, the kind of statements we make in public, we owe it to the people of this country, mm -hmm. right? Whatever those uh, uh, views are, whatever those disagreements are, choice of words matter a great deal, number one. Second, uh, 
there's a question that I was alluding to why can't we take politics away from uh, certain institutions? Right. Now, I, for one, have always argued that uh, I, I think we, we, we need to have a certain orientation, we mm. orientate our minds, basically, right? that when a government comes in on the mandate of the people of this country, right, that president should be given the latitude and the freedom to choose people who can serve in those places, right, and deliver. Because ultimately, the buck stops with him. He takes responsibility. He goes back to, into an election. And if he has appointed people who are a disservice to his aims and aspirations, but then also, right, to, 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 to the people as a whole, then obviously he gets to suffer the ballots, right? So I think. The presidential system is very powerful in a mm. sense. So I think the sooner we come to terms with that reality, that when a president comes in, right, that president should have the latitude and the freedom to appoint people in offices, right, and those people should serve at the behest of His Excellency the President, and their tenure ends when that president tenure ends. And I think the stop. claim, the claim is whether be it um, when Anes Kroma was in office or when um, now that we have um, President Bill in office. Um, the constitution gives them that power. I mean, it's their prerogative to appoint. So nobody is taking that power away from them. What, what I think the, the, the argument is they must do so within the confines of the law. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, I agree. And, and, and look, and that is what we seek to do at right. each and every instance, right, where mm -hmm. we have to do consultations. We do consultations. I mean, some might think that uh, consultation has to still be tangis, right? as in uh, the, <laughs> the, the 16th century. That format should still apply in the 21st century world. right? But, but look, we, we, we continue to consult, mm -hmm. right, and because we feel we live in a democracy. We understand we live in a democracy. Very interesting point to, to subscribe to, to, to the point right. to the point I'm making. Just last week, Sierra Leone has been welcomed where? Uh, to join in the Media, Media Freedom Council coalition. Mm? We look forward to continuing a partnership, right, mm -hmm. to defend media freedom and apply the principles of coalition as essentials of democracy. And this was this 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 commendation was coming from the UK government, no less a person than than, than the UK Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, mm -hmm. having commended Sierra Leone for its efforts so far. Now, the, the point I'm making more broadly, have we made progress? Right? The answer is yes. Is there a fundamental shift in the way I mean, those who are not in the business of politics, I mean, are international partners mm -hmm. who have their international benchmarks that every nation on planet Earth is being judged, right? Are we meeting those be benchmarks? Are those benchmarks our aspirations mm -hmm. as a people when it comes to part five, when it comes to the death penalty, when it comes to the gender bill that has gone through cabinet that should be going to parliament at any point? I mean, are we meeting? Right? I mean, the realities and the challenges that we face in making Sierra Leone a better place. Now, the Americans would like to tell you they have a familiar line that uh, uh, the, 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 the work is not done yet in forming a more perfect union in the United States. That is what they would always say. There's still more work to be done, mm. right? From the days of slavery, slavery to, 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 to uh, women emancipation, to the right for blacks to vote. Mm -hmm. They still feel that the union is not yet perfect. Mm -hmm. right? There's still more work to be done. Similarly, I think we can all accept that should be a common point, but there's still more work to be done in making Sierra Leone fit for the 21st century. Mm. But we should also acknowledge that, that we have come this far and we have been able to meet certain, certain benchmarks because this president is determined and has shown that leadership. Right? Just last week he was, in the, he was in the United Kingdom. I think about the first president in the history of Sierra Leone to have met two prime ministers, Theresa May and now uh, 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 Boris Johnson, right? and have had the opportunity to have I mean, a personal conversation on the side of, 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 of those conferences. It, it speaks it, volumes. Is the government committed to continuing laying the tracks um, that would build and improve democracy and the rule of law? S Samuel, if the banks were open today, I would say just take this to the bank. Right? That's an abiding commitment that I can give on behalf of His Excellency, the President, and this government, mm -hmm. that we will continue to do the best we can in ensuring right, that we continue to deepen this thing called democracy. We continue to broaden the political space. We continue to consult. Yes, we know that opposition parties will still have their concerns mm -hmm. because, I mean, you can't help it, but then you know, I mean, they have their own political lens. But let us tone it down. Let us have this discussion. Let us watch the words we say in public, right? Because ultimately, 
you don't want to win an election, mm -hmm. right, and lose. And, and, and lose the people in the process because it is them that ultimately you would have to govern, right? I think this president has shown enough strength and fortitude and determination, right? And that is why we continue, right, to be acknowledged okay. as a government by our international partners All right. for the sheer effort and determination, okay. right, so far since April of 2018. Lena, your take to uh, the callers. <laughs> <laughs> How can I fold that? <laughs> anyway, um, at, at the end of the day, mm. we have to ensure that we sustain and consolidate our world and um, um, the, the democracy. Mm. But um, if, but um, um, yes, the, um, each government comes in, they've, they've achieved so, so, and so, and so. But at the end of the day, you have to look at um, the process, um, how we adhere to the tenets of democracy, mm -hmm. how we, we ensure that there is um, the rule of law, there is also separation of power, there is also checks and balances. And when we ensure that our governments actually have a buy-in to these principles of democracy, then that translates to the people themselves. Because with, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. It is not static, okay? Um, new issues um, arise all the time, and right. it's how we manage those issues it tells us how um, um, vibrant our the democracy is. Mm -hmm. For, now we are still in a very fragile uh, state. But if you don't, if our, if our leaders don't buy into those tenets of democracy by the way they act, what they say, mm -hmm. how they behave in power, that translates to us as the people. Because um, 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 you have a vibrant political system when you're able to attract people into that system mm -hmm. and, and, and see the MMA. Um, um, uh, said earlier that to get more people into the system. And, and what, we no, what we normally find is that if we're, if we're having all these kinds of issues of violations and so forth, you, you, you tend to, to turn people off. Mm. People would no longer decide to go vote. Even if you say, oh, well, you say fundamental. People say, well, wh why am I voting? When we know that when each one of them comes, it's the same thing. Mm. Okay, you tend to also attract the worst kind of people into politics. And unfortunately, I think in some cases, it has happened in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. where good people who should be in the system, people with integrity and so forth, um, have decided that they're going to stay back and so forth. And that does not augur well for our democracy, because what we want is a well-functioning system where those who, um, 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 talented people, are, 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 we see them in the system. It's strengthening our democracy, it's strengthening our institutions, it's strengthening our leadership, it's strengthening us socially, economically uh, um, um, as well. Therefore, that's what I'm saying. The optics have to be there. We have to be seen when in power to do what should be done. Um, um, uh, somebody said, um, it's, it's um, um, if a political party did something wrong the last time, the, own, the, the next political party comes in, you should be able to, let, let's straighten this out. Mm -hmm. This is not how it's done. And that sets a precedent on how we go forward. Mm -hmm. And it cements those fundamentals of democracy. And as of now, we, are, we, we say democracy, democracy, but, but sometimes we really have to question how um, our commitment uh, uh, to it. And at the, at the end of the day, this is the only political system that, we, that would benefit us. No other other system. You know? So we have to ensure, whether you're APC, SLPP, NGC, whatever, that we have a buy-in into the system. Our laws are there to be protected, to be safeguarded, to ensure that democracy is sustained and, and in, we have a... a in, in a minute, a, let me ask you this question. Yeah, we've been talking about democracy. But have, have we modeled 
I mean, our own concept of democracy to actually fit our own, I mean, the politics we practice and well. I think it, I, I think it's an as I said it's it's an ongoing thing. Mm. It's 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 a living document. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that we have we 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 have to put. Um, uh, um, uh, democracy is not about uh, representative democracy is not mm. about one size fits all. Right. We have to put it within our own context, yeah. and these are some of the issues that we are grappling with. Mm. And but and I, and I said to you, we need dialogue. We need to be engagement for and for for us to sort it out, ensure that we have pillars in place mm -hmm. within our own context to ensure that we have something that um, is workable. Um, it, it, as, as I said, it's, 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 uh, it's a functioning, um, uh, um, it's, 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 it's a concept that is evolving mm -hmm. and, and we, we just have to ensure that we, we have a buy-in into it. Um, our leaders are, are truthful about it. It's not all about, oh, yes, um, a democracy, elections mm -hmm. and all that. But mm -hmm. we have to, all these things, rule of law, separation of powers and all this. The judiciary has to be independent because it gives us citizens confidence that we, we need. The, the, the fundamental thing that us as citizens need is justice. When we know that we can go somewhere, if we are wrong, we will go and get justice. But if you don't have all those things, it then undermines those pillars um, of democracy. The, 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 the democracy. All right, CD. Uh, a very big thank you to uh, <coughs> the callers and uh, the texters, even those uh, who may have insulted us that you skipped. <laughs> 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 you know, a big thank you. <laughs> 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 But, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is uh, that uh, it is not always true that uh, no matter what, you know, whether President Bill does good or bad, we will always criticize. That is not true. I mean, we are Australian unions. We are a country of seven million people. We believe that uh, if a government does well, we'll say it. But at the same time, we, we should also not shy away from, uh, you know, stating mm -hmm you know, the wrongs that the government is doing. I mean, I stated earlier uh, from the onset that, uh, you know, our democracy is based on the 1991 constitution. I see every time issue of constitutionality comes up, people will bring the Samsumana issue, mm -hmm. trying to justify the many constitutional violations that we see uh, under this administration. But I always say this, I mean, for, for, for us, the Samsmana issue was a very serious issue, uh, a very serious constitutional issue. And I am particularly, as a Sri Lankan, happy that uh, it went all the way to the Supreme Court because we all know that the only competent authority to interpret constitution, you know, especially as it relates to issues of, of, of such nature is the Supreme Court. That and can only be challenged in the court of public opinion now. And <laughs> that had, its, that had its, its, its logical conclusion. And mm -hmm. that is where also it is important. And this is the problem some of us have with the current judiciary. And that is why it is important that when we have issues of this nature that has a, a constitutional you know, implications that have been challenged by citizens. If the issues get to the court, assign them. Don't assign one part of it and then leave the other part. You know, if, if people appeal, assign their cases so that they can be heard and have logical conclusions. We have piles of cases at the Supreme Court that have never been empaneled to judges for hearing. I mean, so when you have situations like those, I mean, what, how can you trust the process? How can you say that our, we are strengthening our democracy? We've had you know, three successive governments since we brought in our democracy in 1991. I mean, after the interruptions by the coups, of course. We all know former President Ani, I mean, Tijan Kaba focused on building institutions and all. President Anes Baikroma came in focused on strengthening and, you know, and then also focused on physical development. Uh, it is very clear 
that uh, President Bill's focus may be uh, it's, it's much so much on uh, the international image of him and his government. Because they are so much keen on, oh, the president go shake hands with Dominic Crab. You know, so that, that, that is the only reason how we could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire a private jet to go have dinner with Dominic Crab to go have, you know, handshake with the prime minister. It doesn't take away the fact, whether Dominic Raab says you are the most handsome president, it doesn't take away the fact that you just appointed a neck commissioner violating the, the provisions of the constitution of this country. Yeah. It doesn't take away the fact that nine elected members of parliament were kicked out you know, through a court under, under, your watch, under your watch. It doesn't take away the fact of the many, many violations that we have right. seen as Thank far as you. the constitution is Thank concerned. Thank you very much, um, CDI Atunis of the APC, Lena Thompson, political science lecturer and uh, Imran Sila from the um, Strategic Communications Unit at the Ministry of Information and Communications. We apologize for um, not getting Ibrahim Tomi. And again, um, we apologize for not um, having the minister who has been represented by Imran. I, of course, um, that has been the argument. Yes, we had the minister consented to be here, but Imran represented him um, on the show. And that's all we have time for in tonight's program. Many thanks to our panelists for giving us their time and to you, our lovely audience. Um, a repeat of this program comes up on Thursday at 4 p.m. Thank you for staying with us and participating in the program. Be sure to catch a fresh edition next um, week here, same time, same station, your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced news. And coming up after this is the AYV Primetime News. The show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Weisbanger saying good night. AYV Television.